Hi, this is Dr. Lachos, and I wanted to quickly review how to use SPSS to compute an independent samples t-test. You'll remember that you'll want to use an independent samples t-test when you want to look at the difference between two group means. That is, you have one independent variable and one dependent variable. The independent variable is dichotomous, meaning it only has two groups. The data that I have here comes from a hypothetical study looking at the effects of grade level and ethnicity on health risk behaviors. I have seven variables in this data file, ethnicity, grade level, gender, whether or not the student was retained in school, that is whether or not they were held back a grade level between grades 6 and 11, how often they've used marijuana in the last 30 days, how often they've used alcohol in the last 30 days, and how many police contacts they've had in the last 30 days. I'm going to hypothesize that there's an effect of grade retention or not on alcohol use. In other words, I may believe that getting retained or held back a grade level affects how often one uses alcohol. Now the researcher's hypothesis here is that the average amount of alcohol used by those students who are retained a grade level in the population is not equal to the average amount of alcohol of those students that are not held back a grade level or not retained. In other words, I'm hypothesizing that there's some effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. Of course, the null hypothesis is telling us that the effect is simply due to random variation, sampling error, or chance. In other words, in the population, the amount of alcohol used by those students on average that are not held back a grade level or not retained is equal to the amount of alcohol used by those students who are not retained. In other words, the difference between the students that are retained a grade level and not retained a grade level is zero. That is, they are equal. So the first thing I want to do when I am computing an independent samples t-test is to get the sample means for each group. So I need to get the average amount of alcohol used in the last 30 days for those students who are retained and those students who are not retained. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask SPSS to analyze each group one at a time. So I'm going to go to data, split file, and that'll bring up the split file dialog box. I'm going to ask SPSS to compare each group by clicking on my independent variable, retained, and moving that over to this box. Now I'll click on OK, and any analysis that I do will be done on each group. That is, it'll be done on those students who are retained and those students who are not retained. So to obtain the sample means for each group, I'll go to Analyze. I'll go to descriptives and then descriptives here. So I go to analyze, descriptive statistics, and then descriptives. I'll choose my dependent variable, in this case it's alcohol use, and I'll move that over to the variables box. I'll click on options and make sure I'm getting the mean, but in this case I'm, always getting, I'm also getting the standard deviation. I don't really need the minimum and maximum score, although you can ask for it. I'll click on OK and it will compute the sample means for each group. You can see we have 20 students who were retained a grade level and 45 students who were not retained a grade level. The average amount of alcohol use for those students who were retained a grade level is 1.8 drinks in the last 30 days and the number of times that students who were not retained consume alcohol was about one time. Now the question is, is, is there a difference between those students who are retained and those students who are not retained in terms of how often they consume alcohol. And what we don't know is the probability that this difference between 1.80 and 1.07, that is the difference between those students who are retained and not retained and the number of times they've used alcohol in the last 30 days is due to random variation or sampling error or chance. So we need to calculate the probability that this, the effect we see in our sample data 
is simply due to random variation. To do that, we need to compute an inferential statistic. In this case, because we want to compare two means and only two means, we can use the independent samples t-test. Now, the first thing you want to do when computing the independent samples t-test is you want to make sure that you meet the first assumption of the independent samples t-test. And the first assumption is that for each group, the dependent variable is normally distributed. Well, to look at the distribution of scores for each group, you can compute a histogram. We can go to Analyze. We can go to Descriptive Statistics, and then choose Frequencies. And under the Frequencies box, we'll choose, again, our dependent variable. This is alcohol use. And move that over to the Variables box. We'll click on the button Charts. And that will allow us to select histograms, and we'll ask for the normal curve. We'll click on Continue, and then click on OK, and it will produce a histogram showing the distribution of scores for each group. We can see that for the students that are retained to grade level, the dependent variable, the number of times used alcohol in the last 30 days, is normally distributed. However, the distribution of scores for those students who are not held back a grade level or not retained looks like it's positively skewed. That being said, the independent samples t-test is fairly robust against violations of this assumption. So unless it's wildly positive or wildly negatively skewed, you're going to be okay. If you're ever in doubt, please consult a statistician. Well, now that we've met the assumption that the dependent variable is somewhat normally distributed for each group, we can compute the independent samples t-test. Before I can compute the t-test, however, I need to tell SPSS that I want to analyze all cases and not to split the file. So I can go to data, I'll go to split file, and I'll choose analyze all groups. So now any analysis I do will be done on all the cases at one time. Now to do the independent samples t-test, I'll go to analyze. Again, we're comparing means. And because we're comparing two means that are not related to each other, we'll choose the independent samples t-test. I need to specify my dependent variable, or the test variable. In this case, it's alcohol use in the last 30 days. And I'll move that over to the test variables box. And then I'll take my independent variable, which is retained. And I'll move that over to the grouping variables box. SPSS calls the independent variable in an independent samples t-test the grouping variable. I need to define my groups. So I coded retained a 1. And I compo uh, computed or coded uh, not retained a 2. So I'll click on Continue. And now when I click on OK, SPSS will compute the independent samples t-test. So you can see the first thing it does is it computes the descriptive statistics for each group, those students who were retained in school and those students who were not retained. You can see, again, the average uh, number of times that students who were retained in school consumed alcohol was 1.8 times and the average number of times that students consumed alcohol for those that were not retained or not held back in school was 1.07 times. We don't know whether or not this effect is due to random variation. The next thing we want to look at is this independent samples test box. We want to first examine the second assumption for an independent samples t-test, which is homogeneity of variance. In other words, the sample variances for each of our two groups cannot be significantly different and Levine's test for quality of variances checks for this. It computes an F calculated and gives us a probability value or significance level for that test of the assumption. We can see here that the probability or significance level is 0.44, therefore it's greater than 0.05 and we have not violated this assumption. We can assume that there are equal variances. If this value under SIG for Levine's test of a quality of variances is ever 0.05 or less, you have violated this assumption and you cannot use the independent samples t-test. If this ever happens, please consult a statistician. Now what we're really interested in looking at is the results for our t-test. 
we need three pieces of information. The first piece of information that we want to obtain is our T calculated or T score for our equal variances assumed. So we're going to use this first row of numbers. Our T calculated is 2.21 and then we want to look at the degrees of freedom which are 63 and the exact probability that the effect is due to random variation or what's called the significance level and that's 0 0.03. So our T calculated is point, excuse me, 2.21, degrees of freedom are 63 and the probability that the effect is due to random variation is 0 0.03. Now we can take out that piece of paper. We write down our researchers and no hypothesis. We'll go ahead and write down our T calculated, which in this case is 2.21. We can write down our degrees of freedom, which is 63. and we can write down our probability value which is 0 0.03. Now we'll draw this probability graph that help us, helps us interpret our effect. The probability graph ranges from 100% chance that the effect is due to random variation to a 0% chance that the effect is due to random variation. Of course we're going to mark off the lowest 5% of the distribution or what sometimes is called the rejection region and then all we need to do is plot our exact probability value. 0 0.03 is less than 0 0.05, so we might agree that it's right about here. We look up and it says reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis and it looks like the means in the population are in fact different. That is, there is a difference in alcohol use among those students who are retained and those students who are not retained. In other words, we have statistically significant results. What we don't know now is the nature of the effect. We don't know whether those students who are retained consume more or less alcohol than those students who are not retained. To find out the nature of the difference, we can go back to our sample means and look at the averages for each group. And what we see is that those students who are retained in school consume more alcohol than those students who are not retained. So it looks like there is an effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. That is, students who are retained or held back a grade level in school between grades 6 and 11 are more likely to consume alcohol than those students who are not retained. Well the last thing we need to do is make sure we write up our results. We'll use the Cronk text in our APA manual to write up our results. We'll be sure to explain not only the test we computed but also whether or not we achieve statistical significance. We'll report our t-value, our degrees of freedom, and our exact probability value as well as report the nature of the effect including the sample means and sample standard deviation and of course we'll have that last sentence that explains the effect in layman's terms. For example, students who are retained a grade level are more likely to consume alcohol than students who are not retained in school. If you have any questions make sure you contact me and of course have fun with SPSS.